Oh shit, he's got the notepad out. Don't worry, nothing too frightening. Today we're just going to talk a little bit about op amps. If you've watched my videos on the 555 timer, I've told you guys that the 555 is probably the most widely used, widely manufactured IC in existence. Well, the op amp is probably the hardest working IC in existence. It is used everywhere. So let's start with the symbol. The symbol for an op amp is a right facing triangle. It has two inputs, plus, minus, and an output like that. So these are called differential inputs. And the plus input is called the non-inverting and the minus input is called the inverting and this is of course called the output now there are two other connections we need a V plus and a V minus two separate power sources basically for this to work and as I said, it's an op amp. It is an amplifier and its features are a high gain. Also, it uses no current. These inputs here will not take any current. All they do is read the voltage. They sense the voltage they don't read it. Now the formula to figure out the amplification, whoops, God, I, I, I'm like brain dead today, is A, that's the amplification. So we say V out equals A times V plus minus V minus. And that is how we figure out the amplification of the op amp. Now the op amp that we're going to use today is the LM741. It is a single op amp. Now there are others. There is the LM358, which is a dual op amp. Now if we look at the pinout, for the 741 it has eight pins now pin one is offset no and so is pin five offset no and pin eight is not connected so pin two is our inverting input pin 3 is our non inverting input and pin 4 is our negative voltage source pin 6 is our output and pin 7 is our positive voltage source all right like the saying goes I told you that so I can tell you this what we're going to make today is a non-inverting amplifier. And it goes a little something like this. Here's our op amp. Non-inverting, inverting, output. So we will have a voltage coming in to our non-inverting input. And then from V out, we are going to have basically a voltage divider that feeds back to the inverting input. Now remember I told you we have those two power sources. 
So our V plus will be nine volts and our V minus will be minus nine volts. And our divider is going to be a 10K resistor and a 1K resistor. And that should give us a gain of around 11. All right, now let's take a look at the circuit. Oh, before I show you the circuit, if you've never dealt with a dual power supply like this before, positive and negative, you simply make it like a voltage divider. So we have one voltage source here. We have one voltage source here. We connect them together. This point here is ground. This point here is minus nine volts. And this point here is plus nine volts. So that's how we get our dual supply. All right, let's bring in the goodies. Let us zoom in. Okay, so here we go. Here's our circuit. Ignore this little red wire for now. That's gonna be our input. Here's our LM741. And here we have pin one, not connected. Pin two, our inverting input. Pin three is where our non-inverting input will come in. And pin four is our negative voltage. Pin five, not connected. Pin six, our output is this voltage divider here. Here is a 10K brown, a black, black, red going over to the other pin, which, look at that pin, which is a 1K brown, black, red. And the point where they connect the voltage divider feeds back to our inverting input. Now for the power source, these two alligator clips here are coming from my bench power supply. And this, these black and white wires here are coming from this little power supply unit you guys have seen me use before. So they're both getting positive nine volts. So plus nine volts from the bench power supply. There is the ground from the bench power supply, which is feeding into plus nine volts from my little power supply. And the negative from my little power supply is fed into the ground rail. And the positive from the bench supply is fed into the uh, plus five volt rail or the VCC rail. All right, so now I'm going to power up my power supplies. So the circuit is now basically energized. And we can bring in the meter here. I'm going to zoom out. That would be in. Let's try out. Okay, so there's out. And you see with nothing feeding that input, we're almost down to the bottom at negative 7.61 volts. So for our voltage input, I just have a double A battery. It's negative goes to ground and it's positive goes to our non inverting input. And voila, we're almost up to nine volts. Now, the thing about the op amp is it can only amplify up to the positive voltage or the negative voltage. Those are its constraints. It cannot go above them. So that's your introduction to op amps from me. I hope you liked it. If you did, give me a big old thumbs up. Please comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll check you guys out next time.